Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. It's time to do the final video of this series, How to Paint a Person. I want to make it look finished, kind of a, a bare minimum painting. This is just to demonstrate that the way I've been painting this person is by having knowledge of the parts that make up a person. So if you know a comparative size and shape for each part. So bicep, you know, it has a size. Let's say that the size is, I don't know, a little shorter than my head. But whatever it is, you can make your own comparison and you that's a memory tool. You, you take each part and, and you memorize its basic size and shape. Once you have those things organized, in uh, your mind, then you can reference them much more quickly as you're working your way through what would be a complex picture where you're trying to assemble all of that information. It's really hard on my brain if I'm trying to assemble foreign part things that are not committed to my memory. When you're learning to draw this anatomy, it's very helpful to draw with the intent to recognize each part while you're drawing it so that you're able to build up your, your memory. This hand is very big and I know that because I have it right next to this head and my size reference for a hand is that it should you know fit over the face and I think that's really common. I'm, I'm by a long shot not the first person to be told that. So if that hand looks like it's gonna wrap halfway around the head like it does then it's it's bigger than what I think will look natural. So I, I have this size comparison to immediately compare the hand to. And that's just second nature for me is to always, when I'm looking at hands, always compare it to the head that I've drawn. So I want to shrink it down to maybe about that size and, and that'll probably look more natural. So while that hand area is drying, I think I'll just go ahead and Put some eyes in here. You know, knowing all of the, the different pieces of a person is not necessarily knowing exactly where they need to go every time. It's just gonna make your it's gonna make your trial and error process a lot smoother. Okay, that's really all I want to bother with for the eyes. I don't feel like I need anything else in this picture. Just enough eye to make it look like a human. Okay, so I'm just gonna blob this paint on here. I'm gonna do my best to imagine where that thumb might connect. So that's on the opposite side. And you know, it's never cheating to look at my own body parts. So, you know, I can, I can look at my hand, turn around, I can use a mirror, but what I'll see is I'll see that, that big muscle that connects to the thumb coming out from behind this and then the thumb attaching to it right here. So I kind of have this section, this section, a joint in between, and then I have this right here that will, get a highlight on it because it's in the front. It's the closest to me and then I'll put the fingers coming off of that part. So the fingers, uh, this is maybe coming slightly toward me. So if it's coming slightly toward me, watch when I roll this, my hand slightly toward me, then I can see more of these top knuckles. So even if it was flipped around, I just can't turn my hand that way. Uh, same effect, you know. So I want to see these fingers doing kind of a stair step thing like this. So I want to go uh, one, this, this will be the pinky right here. And then I'll go uh, just next finger, next finger as I get higher, like that. So it starts to roll back down. You can see that my, my knuckles are in an arch shape. So same thing here. And then if I do just a little bit of a highlight, that thumb will look like it's coming out of the other side. So like I said, there's a joint in between those two sections. So it'll kind of go up then out again right here and I'll grab some of this almost dry but not quite dry paint and try to blend this a little bit. Now I'm ready to put that shadow color that I mixed so I'll put that right in here and I'll make sure that my mid-tone is showing you know like we like I talked about earlier in this painting I make sure that I can see mid-tone in between the light and the shadow. That's what makes all of this skin look translucent and, and glowing in the sunlight. Okay, so you see I have that little bump. There's a little more work to do here because I want there to be this arch. See this arch where the hand comes down further. So to make this look natural, I just want to use the black and create that arch. 
Okay, now I have a downward facing edge and I made all of these lighter where they were facing down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white in my mix. You know, a lot of the time my hand can be really lit up by the sun, you know, so I might choose to make more violet colored shadows. I, I just now thought of that. I'll show you what that looks like. You know, it can be a neat effect to make something look like it's a little more translucent. And the rest just like the face. I can do it just by adding a little bit of a red into my shadow color, probably. There, see all that red in there just makes it look like the sun is just, just lighting the whole thing up. Basically the same thing I did with the nose. Just using the, more of the red in the, in the mid-tone in everything. I mean, you can use more in the shadow or the mid-tone, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna make this muscle go out a little bit more. It's gonna go out before it comes back in again. I was noticing as I was looking at people, you know, I just look at people. That's kind of creepy, isn't it? I just look at people and, and so after I paint something, I'll just see it everywhere. So I was noticing that this curve, including on myself, you know, I see myself in the mirror, you know, that curve where that shoulder blade is back, kind of pops out more underneath the armpit. So, I'll, so I'm just adding that in. Okay, so my skater guy needs legs now. And, and uh, I mean, I already have them sketched on there, but I'm gonna put some maybe grayish colored denim shorts. It's, it's helpful to know that there are some real common repeating wrinkle patterns. And so, like I had said before, when a leg is bent upward like this, uh, it pulls it tight from bend to bend. So at every point the leg is bent, those, those are the areas pulling, so they pull on each other. So the wrinkles point to the areas that have, have the pull, that have the tension. So, you know, if I had to make, to make that explanation more clear, you know, if I had a zigzagged line, one, two, three, okay, uh, tight spots are where the bends are. And so a tight spot and a tight spot, they're gonna, they're gonna create wrinkles that point toward each other on some object that was bent in these areas. So, so whenever you do that, you know, you'll have a wrinkle or, or a set of wrinkles that comes up this way from where this, where this uh, thigh, where the butt is bending up like this. I have wrinkles that are pointing up this way and then from the knee, uh, likewise, up here I'll have wrinkles that are pointing down that way. And so the wrinkles won't go all the way across the knee because that is fabric that is stretched tight. So there's not room for it to wrinkle. But in between the two is where I probably will see wrinkles. So I'm gonna put a highlight on the top of the leg trying to be consistent with where I've already established the light. It's coming from up here. So I want light hitting the top of that leg. And then I wanna have some shadow areas that have that kind of zigzagged pattern. So we'll just make a couple wrinkles and then I won't make them right on the knee. So they come down that way. So I didn't have it all mapped out in my head exactly where these wrinkles would be. I just know that they point that direction. So I'm to an extent just letting nature take its course and seeing where they end up if I just make lines that are in that general direction. Now this leg should not be nearly as bright as the upper body here because it's not in the sunlight. This, this, these uh, shorts are, are gonna be casting a shadow on it. So I might have a little bit of a bright light hitting this edge of it right here. Might be hitting right here where it comes out from behind the shadow. So I'll put that one bright area on there, but I won't make it extremely bright. Okay, I'll put a little bit of red in there. Here's his knee coming out. Okay, let's put a little bit of white. So then I'm gonna curve this line because that leg is pointing slightly away. So that means you'd see the rounded shape along the, the contour of his leg. Give him a nice fat calf muscle. This guy can jump. Get the shape of these pants a little bit more fine tuned. I'll put a you know, border on the shoe, it comes down like this. All right, I'm gonna flatten this board out a little bit. It needs to be flipped. 
Okay, well I'm gonna call that finished and just leave all those messy brush strokes on there. I was trying to strain my brain thinking of a cool background to put in that painting, but this this is better. Just leaving it like that. It tells the story of how it's painted. It was a how-to video, so this kind of preserves the story of, of how it was made. You know? I, I like it better that way. Wouldn't want to leave all my pictures that scrappy looking. I've got one down at my aunt's house in Phoenix that looks real similar to this, but it's supposed to be a pretty garden mural, and so I gotta get down there and finish that thing. Man, I feel terrible when I think about that. Anyway, I'm leaving this one. I'm gonna look at comments from last week's video. Last week was a Christmas New Year break. I wanna especially thank those of you who took time to tune in during the break. I mean, I'm just so complimented that my video was worth your break time. Kinza says it's 6 a.m. And I have not slept because I've been binge watching every video of yours ever. Did you really watch them all? I gotta know if you actually watched them all. That is a lot of videos. So thank you. I can't say thank you enough if you really did that. My silly channel must be first place comment because she says, seriously, no comment yet? Everyone is on vacation, says Muhammad. Well, I think that that's the truth. A little bit of confusion with the post. We gotta, we gotta keep Ben on the ball there. Karen's like, what's going on? Sometimes we post something and it's, we're like, oh shoot, forgot something, we gotta pull it off that we gotta repost, you know, that stuff happens. Javier Ariaga, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> says, grande maestro. Hey, thanks a lot, Javier. Even if I did a terrible job of saying that, thank you very much. And uh, I think that's a uh, higher compliment than I deserve, but thank you very much still. Eden Newman says, thanks for posting such great content. I haven't found anyone that explains the fundamentals of painting like you do. I mean that in a good way. You obviously have a lot of experience and talent. Please keep on sharing your paintings with us so that we can learn from the best. Hey, I'm not the best, but thank you very much for that compliment. The fundamentals are the one thing that I, you know, I'm still stuck on. I feel like I'm always stuck on the fundamentals. Everything I figure out, I'm like, man, this is a real fundamental truth here. I should have been using this all along. You know, maybe that's why it comes across as fundamentals, because for me, I just, I feel like everything is a fundamental. I always feel like I'm kind of at beginner level and always figuring out a starting point. I, I learn some new thing and I think, wow, this is just a, a building block for all this. Every discovery is like, like a, a doorway to a whole new world. Brown guy says third. Hey, all right. Good job being the third comment. Music Girl says, I know you know this, but you are a genius. Hey, thank you very much, Music Girl. I'm no genius, really. I'm not. I'm just a guy that got really excited about researching something and wanted to see what would happen if I just dug in without trying to do it the right way, you know, without thinking too much about the way it was supposed to be done, but just looking at things as if no one had ever seen it before. That was kind of my approach. And the things that stuck that I ended up using were things that I had discovered with my own experimentation, my own theory, like maybe this happens because this. And you know, I, I don't know if you, you've ever gotten a chance to see my earlier videos where I'm showing some of my old pieces, but you know, I, I feel like my early pieces show that I'm in fact not a genius. I just was somebody that, that just had a, a long attention span and a passion for that discovery, the, the learning process of it all. You never get to know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes, you know. I don't know what my ability level is compared to another person, but I definitely don't feel like a genius. Just somebody that loves what I'm doing. Either way, Music Girl, thank you very much for that huge compliment. Really appreciate you tuning in. Luke Mitchell says, do I have to learn anatomy to draw people? Yes. <laughs> I sketch from pics or models and just draw what I see. I can learn every muscle in my stomach, but that doesn't show through my beer belly, so I don't draw it. Well, hey, you know, Learn anatomy to the degree that you want to draw it. I mean, if you're drawing what you see, you're drawing anatomy, but I only mean to be helpful in saying that if you try to commit to memory what part you're drawing while you're drawing it, then you'll be adding to a library of information in your mind rather than only benefiting from 
getting that one moment right as you're drawing what you see. You know, I, I just feel like there's a way to further benefit from all your labor and drawing. I think copying pictures is a great learning practice, something that I always loved doing as, as I was learning to draw as I was growing up. I don't especially love copying pictures now because I'm maybe just because my time is taken up with, with the more creating from imagination, but I do always reference pictures and, and copy uh, portions of things just, just for the sake of building up my uh, memory, the, the library of, of shapes and information that I have in my mind so that I can create my own things, you know. Have you ever considered or completed a looser painting? I thought this was one. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that, that would be fun. So this is, uh, Jay Sullivan says this. For instance, if you were to make this skater using 50 to 100 brush strokes. Yeah, I mean, well, nah, I mean, that's, that's a really hard thing to do. For instance, I, I drew a, I painted this picture for my friend Thorne. It's still being painted. I, I said, oh, it'll just take a few days to do it. Yeah, I can copy, you know, all it is just copying color. It's copying from a photograph. Well, I made a grid so that I could do it accurately. Now I just, I'm just unable to break away from doing every square exactly like the photo. I can't break away from it. I'm, I'm looking at it like, yeah, but if I do that, it's not, it's not right. It's not like, the... so I do have a mental block and just letting, letting something go. But, but it's, it's only in certain contexts. I mean, I, I'm okay with letting this be this kind of unfinished look. It's just that, I think I, I just have a mission. Once I get a mission in my mind, it's really hard for me to let it go. Looser paintings are cool, but I really wanted to also demonstrate that these principles are true. I wanted to demonstrate that I am using certain understanding to be able to form this anatomy. So I had to do, you know, enough detail to actually form the anatomy and, and convince viewers that this looks in, you know, like a natural proportioned human being. And if I made it too loose, people might argue, well, you don't even know what you're doing, so why are you even making a how-to video? You can see that I struggle with that subject. Jay Zite with the brush says, thanks my dude, I will support you all day. Hey, thanks. Way cheaper than my past college courses and much more exhaustive with information. Your color theory understanding is next level. Kudos. Hey, thanks a lot. Andy A, thank you for the very nice compliment. Sarik Shahmanov, thank you for tuning in from Russia. At least I think you're tuning in from Russia. Uh, I hope things are going well for you over there in your part of the world. Thank you, Mark Thompson, for calling me the mural master. But I am not the mural master. Thank you very much for that nice compliment. And digestion starts at the mouth is second place on the comment strand. Good job. Hey, a new thing we've been doing is posting some of your work in each video. So if you've got a project you've been working on, or uh, if you've maybe bought some of my videos and painted along, we love to see that stuff. So just uh, post your project at Mural Joe and we'll be scouting for it. Again, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.